Welcome to wonderful Sharjah, a lovely slice of paradise nestled in the heart of the United Arab Emirates. Sharjah once again provides a stunning venue for the final round of the UIM F1H20 World Powerboat Championship, where the 2016 title will be determined. Sharjah is a lively and unique city with mellow, contented people removed from the hustle and bustle of neighboring Dubai. But it's also a modern and upwardly mobile sheikhdom with a character that sets it apart. Long stretches of gorgeous, sandy beaches, history at every turn, pristine desert and wildlife just a drive away, and a world-class aquarium, Sharjah does not disappoint. Sharjah has always been an important regional trading port and the locals have a deep affinity for the water and the sea. Sharjah is also intimately connected to the desert, which has a deep significance in local culture, and locals often get away to experience the beauty, adventure and mysticism that the desert has to offer. Sharjah celebrated its 17th year hosting the UIM F1H20 World Powerboat Championship with the Sharjah Grand Prix marking the final and deciding round of the 2016 season. Now let's take a look back at what happened in the previous round. The penultimate round at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix saw high drama right from the get-go as Jonas Anderson won pole position, shaking things up at the top. the start, Schiap looked set to rocket ahead on the straightaway and take that lead from the Swede. But Anderson held firm, kept his nerves and just managed to fend off the French world champion's challenge. Schiap managed to take second position from Eric Stark who was bumped down to third, Sean Torrente in fourth followed by Ahmed Al Hamali and Alex Carella. The drama began when Zhang Ziwei barrel rolled. At the restart, Stark and Shiap locked horns, but Shiap held on to second. Just two laps later, the second yellow flag went up. This time it was Ahmed Al Hamali who was squeezed out by the Abu Dhabi boats, losing control and spinning out in the spray, narrowly avoiding collision with Stromoy. The third yellow flag in 14 laps went up for Jesper Fors, who had a spectacular crash. the restart, Sean Torrente finally got past Eric Stark. Behind them, there was a constant back and forth between Daniel Kamzi and Moritz Stromoy for seventh place. Eventually, the two colliding and Al Kamzi out of the race. In the end, Anderson managed to hold on for a memorable fifth career win, while Shiap's runner-up position placed him in prime position for the world title in Sharjah. The drama lasted till literally the last second with a drag race on the final straightaway between Torrente and Corella. It was a photo finish, Corella just managing to sneak in for third place. <laughs> that result means Shiap needs just one point for the world championship in Sharjah, while Torrente has to win and hopes Shiap is unable to get any points. Corella, Celio, Stark and Anderson can all still fight it out for a year-end podium spot and for the team championship. There are 20 drivers from nine teams competing at the Grand Prix of Sharjah. Two-time defending world champion Philip Schiap of F1 CTIC Shenzhen China team came very close to sealing the championship in Abu Dhabi, but not close enough. He needs just one more point. That one point leaves the door slightly ajar for his closest rival, Torrente. If Torrente were to win and Schiap somehow failed to get points, the American could nab his first ever world title. Shiap has an impeccable team with two championships under his belt, but he was unable to finish here last year.
still. Torrente has the odds stacked against him, but he's determined to win here. For the past three years, he's been on the championship podium, but never on the top rung. That one point is the opportunity he needs to finally make it happen. For other teams, the fight for a year-end podium and the team's championship has reached its final hour. Alex Carella's year has been disappointing, and for the first time in six years, he's out of the running for a world title in the final round. But after a no-point showing in China, he's back on a roll with that heart-stopping third-place finish in the last race in Abu Dhabi. Defending Sharjah Grand Prix champion Maritz Stromoy has been shaking up the field in every event, winning her first Grand Prix here last year. <laughs> Everything changed that uh, that day. Uh, back home we had a lot of publicity, we had a lot of people cheering for us when we came home, so it was good. And now we're here again and we want to do it again. Sammy Celio, on the other hand, recovered from a poor start to the year to then become a strong contender for a top three year-end finish. He can't win the title, but he can get a podium and also vie for the team championship trophy for Mad Croc Baba Racing. Jonas Anderson has been the hottest name of late, winning pole in the Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi with some exceptional speed and form. Can he cause another sensation in Sharjah and get points for a Team Sweden podium? A near driver on the tour, the talented Rashid Al Kamzi for Team Abu Dhabi. He's the fifth driver on the tour to progress to the top ranks of F1 from F4. Yeah, I feel uh, proud uh, to be with the F1 with the, with the guys. Uh, some of the guys, they have many world champions and uh, it is good for me to mix with the guys. I learn. The Sharjah circuit is a highly technical and demanding five-pin course where waves reverberating off surrounding walls make these waters extra difficult to negotiate. Uh, the Sharjah race course is probably one of my favorites. Um, it's inside of a lagoon, there's sea walls all around, so you stand here and look at the water and it's really smooth and then you go out there and it's a big bathtub and I love that. BRM qualifying is divided into three sessions. Q1 where the 20 boats will be reduced to 12, and then Q2 where the field will be reduced to the last six who will compete for pole in Q3. Q1 was a real battle as boats struggled to find clear water and good top speeds. Some new names made it into Q2, like victory teams Nader Bin Hendy, qualifying 10th, Bartek Marsalek of Blaze Performance, and Grant Trask of EMIC. On the other hand, veterans like Duarte Benevente, Francesco Cantando and Maritz Stromoy failed to make the cut. No, it's really bouncing everywhere and I, we couldn't get one clean lap. There was boats everywhere trying to uh, destroy everything for us. So, no, it was a really, really difficult. Also out in Q2 were Zhang Ziwei, young Rashid Al Kamzi, Christophe Larigo, Jesper Fors and Mike Shimura. The drama continued in Q2 as boats tussled for precious water space on a circuit surrounded by walls. Alex Carilla failed to find the speed to make it into Q3, with his teammate Daniel Kamzi also well off the pace. Ahmed Al Hamali also struggled and had some words to say to Sean Torrente. The big surprise was a first ever Q3 showing for Bartek Marsalek. Also out in Q2 were Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba, Nader Bin Hendy, and Grant Trask. Q3, where each driver gets two laps in the course all to themselves to lay their fastest lap times to see who becomes leader of the pack. Eric Stark went out first in the session and he found good rhythm, smooth as always, laying down a respectable 45.11 lap time to kick things off. Next out was Jonas Anderson, Fresh off a pole win in Abu Dhabi and looking to repeat his brilliant performance there. He did not disappoint with a whopping 44.33 lap time. But on his second lap, he pushed too hard and his boat went flying. Huge crash. Here it is again on the replay. At these speeds, once you get a little lift, it's very hard to keep that boat down. Despite the damaged boat, Jonas Anderson is still the man to beat with... Oh. 
provisional pole. Push too hard. Next up, Bartek Marsalek in his first ever Q3. He didn't quite find the speed he needed though, settling for a 46 second flat lap time. Sean Torrente was the fourth man out. He produced a brilliant couple of laps to beat Stark's time with a 45.01, but was unable to beat Anderson's time. Sammy Celio came out after Torrente, giving it all he had, but he only managed a 45.60 lap time, beating Marsalek. Last man out, the overwhelming world title favorite, Still Philip second, Schiap. Right? We just gotta start in front of this damn one boat. It's been like, I swear, like. I don't even know how long. I can't remember the last time I started in front of that damn one boat. So hopefully we get it this time. The Frenchman was his usual blistering best, and he was incredibly fast out there. 44.92. He beats everyone except Anderson. So Jonas Anderson nabs a fourth career pole position and a second in a row but will he be able to take advantage of it come race day after that big crash? To his right, Anderson will have to fend off Schiap, Torrente, Stark, Celio, and Marsalek. I made a mistake in the first lap and I didn't recognize what, how good the time was, so I think I go one more lap and I, I push too hard. It's simple, simple mistake, but uh, big one. This is it, the final race of the season. It all comes down to Sharjah once again to see who will reign in 2016. Hard race in the front of us and a big, uh, big fight for the team championship. Still fighting for the second in the championship as well. So let's see. After a first ever Q3 showing, Bartek Marsalek starts in sixth. Today is a new day, the race day. I will have tough opponents on the left and right side, but I feel it's finally my place. So. I will do my best, keep following. We'll see what happens. It will be very hard because the 17th position is not that good, but we try to push like, uh, like we did in Abu Dhabi. The guys have been working the whole night to fix the boat and the engine, and uh, many people from uh, other teams have helping me, so it's only one way to give them back something. To, we go for the win. That'll be a tall order for Anderson, with a world championship battle unfolding behind him, hinging on a single point. That's right. That's all you need, right? One point. You can win by one. It's the same as winning by 50. So uh, maybe it's there for us to take. We'll see. We'll find out here in about an hour. That's what's cool about this. Torrente has to win, and this number one boat has to somehow fail for the American to realize his dream of a world title. Not easy. We worked for this moment. Especially at this moment, the pressure is uh, incredible. Can she up finish the race? Can he get that one point between him and the title? All eyes are on him as the boats line up for the grid. Anderson on pole, to his right, the two world title contenders, Schiap and Torrente, then Stark in fourth. Corella starts seventh. Former Sharjah Grand Prix champion, Tani Alkamzi, starts in 11th. Crowds are psyched and ready for the action as 10,000 horsepower is about to be unleashed on the Khalid Lagoon. Sharjah Grand Prix is underway. Shiap and Torrente neck and neck in this crucial opening drag race with Shiap just nudging ahead of the American. Great start from Ahmed Al Hamali as he rockets ahead of the pack, followed closely by Alex Corella. But it's a poor start from Sami Celio in fifth as he's quickly left behind by boats on either side of him. Shiap fastest on the straightaway and the inside lane advantage isn't enough for Anderson who's bumped down by Shiap. Tani Alkamzi off to a shaky start as he's passed by Grant Trask and Zhang Ziwei. Behind Xiap, Torrente and Anderson lock horns in a battle for second position. Anderson on the inside, Torrente on the outside in a red on blue showdown. Torrente has the speed as he nudges slightly ahead. <laughs> to that left. 
left-hander. Anderson giving it all he has, but Torrente is just too fast, and the Swede goes from pole position to third in the first lap. A solid start from Bartek Marsalek, who has overhauled Sami Celio to move into fifth, chasing Eric Stark. Marsalek moves across Ahmed Alhamli's path, spraying the Emirates driver and keeping him at a distance. But Alhamli is right up there with a the Polish ace, followed closely by Corella. The two world title contenders ruling the roost in Sharjah, Schiap opening a lead over Torrente. Further down the field, Francesco Cantando locked in a three-way battle with Taniel Kamzi, Moritz Stromoy, and Philip Roms. Stromoy leads Roms, but the young Finnish driver is gaining on her as they approach buoy number four. The two squeeze into that turn very tight, shutting out Alkamzi as he gets hosed down. But Alkamzi finds the speed he needs and manages to pass Roms. Out in front, the gaps widen between leader Schiap, Torrente in second, and Anderson in third. What a great start for Grant Trask, sitting in the top 10 in ninth position, chased by his EMIC teammate, Moritz Stromoy. Behind Bartek Marsalek, battling for sixth spot, are Alex Corella and Ahmed Al Hamili. Alex Corella pushes on the outside and just manages to scrape past the Emirates Racing Team driver. Shiap opens a two second lead over Sean Torrente as he enjoys clear waters for now, but back markers inevitably await and negotiating through traffic can be tricky. Bartek Marsalek maintains fifth position ahead of Alex Corella. Al Hamili seventh, Celio gaining lost ground in eighth ahead of Grant Trask, Moritz Stromoy and Tanya Alkamzi. Tanya Alkamzi trying to close in on Moritz Stromoy to push for the top 10 in a repeat of their battle in Abu Dhabi. Alkamzi in Stromoy's rear view mirror, they're very close, almost touching. Alkamzi comes around buoy four, maintaining a perfect line, and he overtakes Stromoy to move into 10th, setting his sights on Grant Trask. Up in second position and trailing the two-time world champion, Sean Torrente giving it all he has, but Shiap just looks too fast. Meanwhile, Bartek Marshalek still in fifth spot as he holds off a three-time world champion, Alex Corella and Ahmed Alhamili. Despite his windshield wipers not working, Sami Celio catches up with Al Hamili on the outside, pushes around turn two, and smokes Al Hamili to move up into seventh. Grant Trask following behind Celio as he also overhauls Ahmed Al Hamili, whose woes continue as Thani Al Kamzi also flies on by. Sure enough, Al Hamili pulling off the course with steering problems. In the lead, Schiap appears to be losing speed as Torrente gains on the Frenchman, moving up close behind him. The two were ducking and weaving, Torrente poking and perusing, looking for a weakness, trying to push Schiap, but the Frenchman doesn't back down or play it safe. He's in it to win it in true racing spirit. With 12 laps down, the battle for fifth place heats up as well as Alex Gorilla pushes on Bartek Marsalek, driving like he was still in the running for the championship. But Marshallek could only hold out for so long as the former three-time world champion glides on by, bumping the Polish driver down to sixth. There's a crash at the back. Zhang Ziwei's boat goes flying on its side, crashing back down into the water as pieces fly off in the air. Yellow flag as the Osprey rescue team jumps in to help Liu Zhang out of the water. Here it is on the replay as Liu Zhang catches an edge and goes flying, a disappointing end. It takes a very hard hit to do that kind of damage. Luckily, Liu Zhang is unhurt. Also a big disappointment for Francesco Cantando. He's out with engine issues. Not a good year for the Blaze performance team driver. The race is back on, and Torrente flies past Shiap to move into first position. Sean Torrente with the lead, Anderson close on Shiap's tail in third. Celio still having windshield problems, but has a good restart nevertheless, positioned nicely on the inside to take the fight to Alex Corella and Bartek Marsalek. Celio comes around tight, and he passes Marsalek to move into sixth. Out in the lead, Torrente opening the gap between himself and Shiap. Torrente in firm command of the race. In a battle for third is a...
gargantuan five boat Fuster Cluck between Shep, Anderson, Stark, Corella, and Celio with seven world championships in that tangle. In the lead, Torrente opens a huge five and a half second gap over Shiup, who is surely now just seeking to play it safe and make sure he gets points for a third consecutive world championship. Corella gunning it against Stark. Corella does it. Corella on the outside, smokes Stark. Stark bump back down into fifth. Corella is driving like a bat out of hell, and his next target is Jonas Anderson, who stands between Corella and another podium spot. In 10th, Grant Trask is pursuing Moritz Stromoy, but she spins out. She doesn't miss the buoy, but has to wait for Clearwater to rejoin the race as Trask, Roms, Benevente, and Benhendi all glide past the defending Charge Grand Prix champion. Meanwhile, Sammy Celio adds to Stark's woes as the Finn overtakes his Swedish rival to move up into fifth behind Corella. Stark almost loses control of his boat there, but manages to keep it on the water as he now chases Celio, but with Marcelek fast gaining on his starboard side. Up in front of them, Anderson slowing with a problem. Corella zooms past, Corella in third position and on track for another possible podium. Sammy Celio also zips past a struggling Anderson to get chase to Corella for a podium spot. Celio putting in an incredible race, dropping down from fifth to eighth at the start, but eventually regaining ground with excellent racing despite a busted windshield wiper and visibility issues. With just 11 laps to go, Torrente has run away with the lead while Alex Corella starts putting the pressure on Schiap, but the Frenchman holds on for dear life. Schiap incredibly refuses to back down, despite knowing even a 10th place finish for him here would be enough to seal the world championship. Bartek Marsalek is at the race of his life, but alas, the Polish driver succumbs to gremlins in a disappointing end to the season. With the final laps, a three-way battle emerges between Schiap, Corella, and Celio, each driver pushing to the max. Celio comes around on Corella. Corella has a problem. He slows, moves off course, and grinds to a halt. That ends Corella's run. Celio in third position behind Schiap. The runaway winner of this race is Sean Torrente. It wouldn't be enough for the world title, but he capped off a very consistent season with a convincing win. And Philip Schiap has done it. The Sharjah Grand Prix runner-up and the 2016 UIF F1 H2O world champion. Sammy Celio gets third for Matt Croc Baba Racing Team. Hey, we did everything we needed to do, right? We won the race. And uh, I can't thank the team enough. Uh, my wife and daughter, it's just a blessing to be here, you know? It just is. And uh, I don't ever take it for granted. So uh, we're second again in the championship, but we can't finish better than that. We got to win. Anderson closes the race out in fourth. Fantastic result for Grant Trask. Sixth place in just his second race. Roms gets seventh spot for Matt Croc Baba. Both Benevente and Stromoy move up from the bottom to claim top 10 spots. A shame for Bartek Marsalek. Shiap also wins the team championship for CTIC Shenzhen China team. Matt Kroc Baba runners up, victory finishing third ahead of Team Abu Dhabi. Great result for the Dubai outfit in just their second season. We got a win, which is big for our team. Really good momentum going into the off season. And, uh, you know, if Philippe stumbled or had a mistake or a problem, we would have won the World Championship. So third last year, second this year, one more step to go. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. I just can't wait to get started next year already, honestly. It was a hard fight today. I had a really terrible engine set up there for some reason. I don't know why. I, make, uh, I had windshield wiper for, especially for this race, to make best, better visibility. And I broke that in the first lap. So. That was really, really hard fight, so it tastes quite well uh, good to, to be here now today. With the final driver standings for 2016, Shiap makes it three in a row. Torrente runner-up, Celio and Anderson tied third, sharing the podium. Corella fifth, Stark sixth on equal points with Roms. Disappointing year for veterans like Cantando, Stromoy and Pani Alcabzi. The world champion for 2016, Philip Schiap. It's wonderful. It's uh, incredible.
incredible. My team works uh, very hard and uh, we are very scared all the week for uh, sure we can finish the race. Everybody say one point, one point, and one point. It, uh, it's a lot of if you don't finish the race. And uh, now I'm very happy because uh, the, the boat is fantastic. My, my guys uh, work very hard and uh, I have very nice setup, good start. And we are champion three times. What can I say? Always the consummate host, Sharja threw a lavish party for F1 H2O teams. The BRM Qualifying Championship Award was presented to CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. That was followed by the Team Championships Trophy. Victory team finished third, Matt Croc Baba runners up, and in a clean sweep in 2016, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team add the Team Championship Trophy to their collection. See you next year for the 2017 UIM F1 H2O World Powerboat Championship. <laughs>